And welcome back, Summoners, to the Seabolt 2022 National Team Selection, powered by Smart and organized by Peso. We are here for Game 2 of West Point Esports versus Scambolo, and we'll be your shoutcasters for what might be the last game of this series of today. I'm Hyron, with me is Dash, and we just got back from a decisive, decisive, that's more than decisive, that was like pretty much a yeah. stomp there from Scambolo. Ooh, that was a... Honestly, that was a very great stop from Scambalo. Mm -hmm. It was just snowball per snowball, almost mm -hmm. all of the lanes won. And that's also because of Astra and also Jerem playing really well in the top lane, making sure that uh, the Gwen is kept in check and hindi magkakaroon ng chance yung Gwen na makapag power spike pa. And that's what they use in their favor. Even without the teleport, they were able to make use of the individual plays that they can all around the map. And that just spelled out the win for the team. Even the team fight potential of them, really perfect position but for sure west point is not going to take this lying down right so i'm hoping that they can clean up their draft clean up their early game as well and yeah so coming into scambolo's game two they're in a pretty good position i mean that's the case with best of threes naman, no? if you win game one napakaganda na position mo since you only need to continue riding the momentum no and yeah for for uh the comp naman, or for the team for the roster Scambolo doesn't really need to change up too much of their plays because it's almost perfect na yung play nila dun. Like Ayman, papasok siya with Leona at the right time, hindi siya na catch off guard. Dawn just stays back, goes for consistent damage. Same with Sean Maker. Azra just eats up the whole jungle. And si Jeren on that Riven. Uh, I mean, for sure, on any other high skill cap fighter top laner, he's gonna perform well. But he really showed us that he can just go in, uh, despite not having too many ganks early game, he can just go straight in get those skills that he needs by himself without yeah. needing for a gap or any roams. Yeah, I really like that he's very self-sustaining in the top lane and that is really what you want, especially right now na Riot is always going for a lane lane skill. Yun talaga yung hinahanap mm -hmm. nila. Uh, and that has been shown for Merej in the top side and that is really working in their favor. I really like the way that they mm -hmm. play that game. And I hope that West Point Esports has something up their sleeve that can turn things around because mm -hmm. right now the momentum is against them and Scambolo right now is riding mm -hmm. on that momentum. I hope they get their head back in the game and especially with the drafting, they might be able to take that take that down and let's head into the smart picks and dance. This is where it starts, no? If West Point is blue side, yes they are. So if West Point is blue side, they can really leverage that blue side advantage here meanwhile scambolo on that red side they can just go for a one-two punch if there's any power picks that are left open let's say xin Zhao is left open they can pick that up plus say the zeri or the jinx if that's their priority if they're on red uh, since they are on red side so tignan natin kung ano yung bans dito still respecting yung viego dito ni azra may mas nakakatakot pa kesa sa olaf ni azra dito and that is the viego um, he has used it once before, in the, uh, at least once before in this tournament, not lang sa broadcasted game. So uh, I'll just leave that to your imagination, guys. Kung bakit respetado talaga ng uh, West Point dito yung Diego ni Azra. Yeah, and if ever they want to buy something else, they had a hard time with the Olaf during that game. They might want to get that at least to let Revelate have a good time in the jungle. Because a while ago that affected the way that that disrupted the play all around and. If ever they would be able to take that down, they might as well do it. Mm -hmm. But it if does look like the themselves. bans are, yeah, if they can get it themselves, by the way. It's just that Revelate, uh, looking at his champion pool, this is, Olaf might not be up there in his, his pool. It might be there, but it might not be as good as, let's say, his Xin Zhao, uh, his own, his J4. But it does look like the bans are the same up until the Azir mm. ban here. So the respect going on to Sean Maker. Hindi, even if hindi siya yung superstar ng game na yun, si Azra pretty much yung MVP ng game na yun, he's still a big force in that fight na ang daming uh, Emperor's Divide na hinahati talaga, divide talaga ang ginagawa sa fight. And that lets them isolate targets. And in a, uh, in a uh, matchup where both comps don't really have a super solid front line, um, one factor is the gold. Whoever has more gold as has more uh, tankier frontliners, uh, but whoever gets that early uh, gold as well is able to just dictate the, that fight as well. But Thresh coming in for the priority here from West Point, so it was banned out earlier against them. So now Kresho can finally flex his, uh, his hooking muscles here uh, with that Thresh. But let's see what's left open here. A lot of junglers, Shinja, Olaf still left open, and that's gonna be the Jinx 
could it be the Leona once again locked in here for Ayman? Yeah, okay, they, they could also go for the Olaf angle if they want to. Say, mm -hmm. if you can make use of what worked a while ago, just mm -hmm. make use of it until you can. Because it will probably work against West Point Esports if ever they were able to stomp them with that. But without the Azir, things might change for uh, Scambalo mm -hmm. here. Yeah, and then both TF and Azir Ooh. being locked away from him, but the, he's, he might still have um, other mages that can really control the pace of the fight here. Like I said, Kanina, if you can divide the fight uh, in a similar comp, if you can divide the fight so that you're doing a 5v3 win while the two have to run around, say, the Emperor's Divide, is definitely in your favor at this point. But without that, there are other uh, things that Sean Maker can bring out here. Of course, the Aphelios will be on West Point still. So with the Thresh, might be allowing for more aggressive plays in that boss side. It's a lot more gankable uh, than having a Lulu at, down there. And this does mean that Scambolo can opt for a more ganky jungler here that isn't the Olaf since they are running mm. the Chinx Lulu bot lane if they want to invest into go. that. The Yana. Yeah, mm, ju interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because they lost onto the Shenzhou a while ago, they're doubling down on the wave clear that Revelate could use in order for them to play really well more under the team fights. This is a very heavy team fight composition whenever you have an Aphelios in a Diana in your team composition. So mm -hmm. what you want to do here for the side of Scambolo, Ooh. yeah, couple it up with an early game champion and that's going to be the answer there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty good way to round off that uh, jungle for Scambolo. Like I said, if they want to invest into Jinx and Lulu, then they want a jungler that can gank and Lee Sin is definitely one of them. The alternative was Xin Zhao. Uh, but I suppose they... And actually, Xin Zhao would have been nice against the Diana as well. But Lee Sin also fills the same role of just kicking a key target away. Yasuo being locked away here, uh, I believe, uh, from Columnia. So that's one big team fight uh, tool that is taken away from them. Graves being locked away from Scambolo is another huge damage tool that really benefits from having Lee Sin in the party. So... They're really trying to take away as much damage as they can, especially come late game. Yeah, they're taking a lot of champions from uh, from Jerem's side right here, getting the Graves out, probably going to be taking the Jace or the Riven. Uh, but at least right now, Scambalo still has the choice for Mered to have something of his yeah. comfort picks on his hands. So without the Gwen, there's not a lot of answers if ever Scambalo would be taking one of the champions here. There yeah. you go, Jace is up. Oh man, so Jace is up for Jerem. No, that's definitely one of the champions that I've been waiting for in the hands of Jerem. And if he can actually bring it out here, that would actually also Akali. So it is going to be, first they're going to be going for, most likely Sean Maker is also picking it away from Columnia as well. Uh, it is possible, it could be possible that Jerem goes for this Akali, but it's not as... Um, I don't think it's as popular as before on the top side. The Doranecton might make him think twice of taking that uh, Kali, but... Yeah. Oh man, Renekton for Parzival. The one thing that scares me when players, uh, when teams pick up Renekton is... What if it just fizzles? Because if you put yep. down Renekton two kills, it's usually hard to make him relevant. Yeah. That is really also the reason why it's really hard to make Renekton uh, of much use, especially on the team composition like this. Yes, they're very, yeah, they have a lot of Bruiser champions here on their game, so they might be able to sustain a lot during the fights. But again, since a while ago, it has been a problem. What's good about this is that at least they have a Thresh right now, but they're still lacking a lot. But maybe they have a lot of lockdown when it comes to single targets. But it's gonna be hard for most of the members of Scambalo because they're, they're gonna be jumping around. For sure. And with the Irelia, oh, this is gonna be a sight to see indeed. Once again, both of these comps don't have super solid frontliners. The most that we can see here is the Renekton uh, and even the Silas who can the Silas who can drain tank and the Renekton who is just more of a fighter um, than anything. And later on, he's just going to be a CC bot with Ruthless Predator. But here, Scambolo is showing us a very scary composition that can be powerful through all phases in the game. The Lee, they have the Lee Sin uh, for early game. Uh, they have the Irelia as well to just, just have a very solid... After Vamp Scepter, pretty much solid na rito yung Irelia dito ni, ni Jerem. No? So, and if they can enable any single one of these carries with the Lee Sin, and for sure, Azra has his rotations on point na kaya niyang... Mm, 
supportahin yung tatlong carries na to when he needs to be there, where and where he needs to be. Oh, I'm really, really scared about this. If ever Scambalo would be winning the lane here, especially on an Akali in the Relia lane, you don't really expect them to win a lot of their early game. Later on, pa sila mag, um, magka-crash or rather 9, level 9 probably yung power spike na most of these champions but we all know Irelia after a Vampiric Scepter would be relevant but on the side of West Point Esports they have a lot of room to get a single targets here and because they don't have front lines for Scambalo the single target CCs that they have here would be a lot relevant I hope that they would be able to do that because if not Scambalo would just make use of Asra again in the early game and it would just snowball out of control mm -hmm, for sure it's gonna be very very difficult here and this top lane is gonna be a very finicky matchup right like Renekton can try and fight away fight off the Irelia like level two level three but just a little bit of jungle presence here and maybe even a little bit of outplaying from Jerem is gonna be one kill against this Renekton one kill against Renekton and it's going to be game over from there that's what I am always afraid of uh, when people pick up the Renekton, I've, I've, I've actually it's actually fallen out of favor with me over the years. Like before, I was like, okay, top lane Renekton lane bully, but top lane has evolved in a way that Renekton is not the go-to lane bully anymore. Like I go yeah. to a uh, I go to a, a matchup, see Renekton, and I'm worried for the Renekton rather than being worried for the lane opponent. So hopefully yeah. Parzival is able to get those outplays in the top lane, maybe get some help from Revelate as well. Otherwise, Jera might just take over the game after building Vamp Scepter into the, the new buff pork as well after building his mythic. Yeah. The only reason why most of the time Renekton is getting picked is because mm -hmm. if it's against if it's against a Gwen, it's at least okay. Because you're at least you're gonna be going in, backing away after. But against an Irelia, it's gonna be hard. Because after your combo, Irelia is gonna chase you down with a lot of her dashes, and you're basically out of DPS anymore. And that's why it's gonna be hard here for the Renekton. But if ever he would be able to shut down the early game from Irelia, especially for Jerem, that could just snowball in favor of Parsifal. So it's really again another 50-50. And it's all it all depends on the junglers on how Azra is gonna make use of this early game reason. Because for sure, Rele Revelate mm -hmm. would it be relevant until later on in the game. Yeah, and that's gonna be one big worry for the Diana. Of course, post six, the Diana gank is a little bit better. He can try and force uh, a few more ganks with that Moonfall. But the thing is, it's very ulti reliant. Meanwhile, uh, the Lee Sin can just go in. Uh, even without a lot of CC from the Dragon's Rage, the slow from the Tempest should be enough along with this. Just the sheer amount of damage that Sonic Wave Resonating Strike can do when in combined with a, with a laner bringing out the damage, increasing the execute damage of that Resonating Strike. So I'm hoping that the, this is really going to be a game of junglers here. A game of junglers. Yeah. That's how the first game went. And actually, I think most League of Legends games are games of junglers to see who has better impact, who can really yeah. elevate their team to the next level and eke out those small advantages that build up into big ones or just straight up snatching a large uh, heft of gold or objectives from under their noses so I'm really excited to see how this game 2 will go it could be the last game if West Point doesn't shape up but these are experienced players as well and I'm sure that they have a trick up their sleeves yeah if you that's the reason why whenever a jungler gets disrupted that's at least a 30 second head yeah. start for the other jungler and that's why it's super hard to to lose the jungle earlier on in the game and if ever that happens again like it's probably gonna be a deja vu for revelate here especially that another early game champion at least in on the hands of astra who has been has been really good during the last game and mm -hmm. there's a lot of variables to look at but with the junglers they're the, they're gonna be the ones who are setting the pace yeah the junglers are just way too impactful i've always said this at if your jungler gets shafted, you pretty much already lose the game. Or rather, every single effort you make to try and win the game is much harder. Like, for example, yeah. jungler goes down, gets like 0 1 0, or 0 2 early. That means your top lane can't make plays because, of course, Riff Herald is thing, and the ju opposing jungler is going to try and take that and go for a dive on you. Your, your, mid, you can't, your mid lane is a lot more scared to go for trades, go for roams, and your bot lane is just, okay, are we going to get dove for uh, 3v2? So it's 
it's just rough if your jungler gets disrupted early. So hopefully they're able to protect that, def uh, defend that objective. I would say that a jungler is an objective that you can take out early in the game. So hopefully West Point is able to recover from that initial loss. Yeah. They need to defend their, uh, their places here. So it's going to be quite a bit hard for West Point Esports. I mean, if ever they lose here, they, they're they still going to be going to the lower bracket. So they still have a chance to turn things mm -hmm. around or have a revenge match against a Scambolo. But Scambolo, they're probably looking for a 2-0. Mm -hmm. yeah, they went in all in with the Jap having Azera on that lease in. Yes, a lease in pick is very volatile. But on hands of a master, he's going to be dominating. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Uh, like tomorrow, if this is the 12th match, there we go. Mm -hmm. So whoever loses this has to face Orgless tomorrow, right? Yeah. So it's going to be quite a big adventure here. Uh, so let's see how this all plays out as we are thrown into the Summoner's Rift here for our second game of this Ooh. best of three. We're finally seeing some level one play here, but the West Point immediately realizes, okay, that's uncharted territory right now. I don't want to get into that. And they just back off. They didn't even leave any uh, wards because it's a little bit too early to try and get that. Meanwhile, Scambolo, they've infiltrated. This is pretty much West, um, West Point Esports uh, losing a lot, uh, losing out a little bit. But Jerem doesn't even leave a ward just yet. It's just, okay, it's fine. We go in. No one's here. Um, we just check, uh, double check everything in this side of the jungle and then back off. Yeah. After that, at least we're, we're double checking if ever someone's there. And... They tried their best there, you know, but Scumbello right now are just playing it safe because they know that it's going to be later on before most of these uh, solar laners, even the bot lane, become relevant. So they're the ones who are going to be pulling back a pedal just a bit and just wait for Azra to go for a gank. Mm -hmm. That is, and pretty much all these lanes are gankable for, for Lee Sin. Like Azra can just go straight up, Sonic Wave, um, Resonating Strike, like Sean Maker can go for like Ignite. Uh, after a, a big trade there, and Azure can pick it up with Sonic Wave Resonating Strike. Same with uh, Jerem, can go straight for the Flawless Duet, that's already a pretty big CC that he can hit onto Parzival. Can go for that as well. And meanwhile, bot side, okay, this is a little bit harder because Crasho can play uh, very well against diving junglers, but once again, Dawn and Ayman are not letting YJY uh, get this early level 2 against them. Yeah, West Point Sports looking for a very very slow oh, start but they they're probably the ones who are gonna be needing to go for for a gank or a fight mm -hmm. earlier on in the game because they have a lot of single target cc on their hands if ever but it's gonna be hard because revelate needs to have at least level six before he gets a cc that could help out his team to uh to lock down mm -hmm. most of the members for scambolo yeah though though it's a little bit better oh Dawn immediately going here. Azra well, coming in for that gank. A lot of minions blocking, but just flashes Ooh. over to the Tempest, picks up the kill. First blood going to Azra. And they're pretty much pushing YJY away here, forcing him to burn his potions and have a much harder time CSing at this point, having to burn a little bit of mana as well and getting pushed in. That's how Azra plays, man. He's just relentless when it comes to the early game. And meanwhile, Revelate, I was going to say it's a little bit easier for him to gank. No? Because his laners have mm -hmm. CC, but here, let's look at how that happens. Yeah, looking at how it happened, it's just that Azra just Bingak. had a good time here. I mean, going for, even if the wave was in the middle, it was okay. Because it's a Lee Sin, he can just go in, he can bash a lot of times. And it worked out in their favor. I like that Azra is being, is setting the pace here. Again, disrupting uh, most of the lanes. And at least now, Revelate is having a good time. He's, he knows what to do. He's never a losing candidate. I get it. Yeah, that first blood isn't too bad compared to the previous one because that's all it is. It is yeah. a boost in terms of gold, um, but in the end, it's not as disastrous as losing, giving uh, giving over double buffs to the jungler as a second try. They're going to try and gank and go for the dive Ooh. onto this Irelli here, but I think Parzival might have felt, okay, this is kind of sus. We're a little bit of delic here, we're a bit And yeah, and that would have been a bad dive because Azra was right around the corner. I th and without vision there, yeah, the vision that Azra went through um, mm, is actually, yeah, they actually had vision on Azra around the Raptors here. Kalumnia gonna take a lot of damage here. He actually gets finished off by Sean Mago with Ignite. Azra comes in, shoves in the wave. Ayman going for the roam, beating Crasho in his own game right now. And that is going to be another kill on Scamble. A 1k gold lead at 5k at uh, 5 minutes. Yeah. I really like the aggression coming in from Ayman, even with the Lulu just having that extra oomph, that extra shield that he can have. 
is enough for you to get the to get the kills here. And that was enough even. It's also because Kalumia doesn't have mana. That's why he wasn't able to dash away during the battle. Yeah, and right now Scambolo seems to be in a pretty good spot. West Point can still kind of take it slow. Uh, try and leverage the fact that uh, yeah, Parzival is actually doing quite well against J Jerem here. Maybe that'll change once Jerem goes for his first back. Maybe get the Vamp Scepter, maybe get a gank from Azra. But so far, and even with the kill here on Sean Maker, he hasn't had a chance to to back here. Here, he's just gonna have it now. Kalumnia might want to go for the Disrupt here and keep him in his lane. Yeah, then that is going to be the case here. Meanwhile, YJ White Fresho is chilling here. Um, Dawn did miss a little bit of CS as well coming in as YJY uh, has built up a small, small lead here. But the priority is still very much in Dawn in Ayman's favor. Yeah, I like the fact that we have a Hextech break on this game. This is going to be highly contested for both of our teams because they are going to be really needing that extra attack speed and the ability haste with this team composition. Kids. They are going to be fully sustaining during the fights. And what do they need? Yeah, extra attack speed, extra stats. That's going to be great for them. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability haste might be marginally useful here, for, but the attack speed is going to be the way to go for Revelate and YJY. Kalumnia is actually building a pretty good uh, lead in priority here in the mid lane. Sean Maker can't really have a chance to back just yet. Uh, most likely after he just pushes this back, when Kalumnia, yeah, they just go, they just shake their hands and say, okay, let's both just back off here and prepare for Drake. Uh, this, this is the same for the bot lane as well. YJY is going to be able to finish up uh, more of his component items here. Just get those pickaxes double. Longsword Dawn still only has his Noon Quiver. And at this point, YJY actually has a pretty decent CS lead over Dawn here at this point. Yeah. And I'm kind of seeing an angle in where, in where if ever uh, Azara would it be able to get the ganks more. Like, West Point Eastwards would have a chance to come back at like 8 minutes or 9 minutes in the game and where they have their first items already. They can contest the uh, objective at that point in the game. But if ever Azara would be able to get the gank, they could continue this advantage that they have. Mm -hmm. For sure. And right now, Scambolo hasn't actually pressed their advantage too far. Like, the gold lead is like minuscule right now. The two kills earlier um, pretty much don't mean too much. Like, at this point, they're like a longsword's worth. Uh, and it has pretty much evened out mostly because of bot lane as well. Uh, but here, yeah, uh, so far, both of our junglers and our solo lane, uh, mid laners not bringing out too much here, opting for the boost here for a little bit more mobility, get those cooldowns down as well. We have YJY giving us a, a remix, a, a, a Felios remix by constantly switching guns. But uh, so far, not too much action. The Drake not First too act. contested though. Riff Herald Oats is going to be Jerem though. Can I get bullied out? That is going to be the Vanguard's Edge. Could mean the difference between life and death, but in Ooh. comes Revelate, unable to save us. Jerem clutches it out, and a triumph prevents Revelate from going for the uh, follow up kill. Yeah, that was Nasty. a really great fight in the top lane. I mean, they were able to get the stun in, and after getting the combo from Parzival, that was enough for them to get the kill. That was nothing right there. And Revelate was just a bit late to the party. Now, because of that, they're funny because they know that Revelate is even on, top, on the top side. Let's just take the hex thing. Oh man. And that is where it starts with a kill yeah. against the, the Renekton, with Jerem picking up a kill. That's where they start going onto this surf route. So, this will go to West Point, but can Revelate escape because Sean Maker's looking for it? Yeah, he's just gonna be able to back off. So, a little bit of a trade. Uh, that's an extended trade. More like, okay, we give up parts of us life in exchange for Rift Herald. That might actually end up being gold even in the long run. But Jerem's gonna go straight for plated steel caps. Uh, still respecting, still respecting that Renekton. Yeah, and I like that there. Scabalo is always going for this aggressive place, even with the solo laners. Jerem was able to get the kill there just because he trusted that this four stacks is gonna work for mm -hmm. sure. And when yeah. he did, after the combo, after the great timing with the W, that was enough for him to get the win. Especially that he mitigated a lot of damage from the Ruthless Predator. And the Revelate was not there at that point. Also, the flash there from the after getting the Triumph was enough for him to get the survival. And I like that. I like that 
Jerem is always self-sustaining in the top side. Yeah, and Jerem has that dance. And of course, this is in the rally, right? Every fight is a dance where, okay, I'm gonna try and parry. I'm gonna try and parry the ruthless predator, so at least I don't get my health chunked down so much. And once he got those Ionian fervor stacks, and plus uh, just having uh, the Keystone activated at that point, right? So uh, that's a big swing, and that's a pretty much a pro anime protagonist. Anime protagonist like Super Saiyan moment for the Aurelia player. And here actually going yeah. for the bladed seal caps means that he does respect that Renekton enough not to go for uh, just all his component items on this Aurelia. And going for pickaxe first, because I think he realizes that he's not gonna be if he constantly trades with the Renekton, it's gonna be in the Renekton Ooh. over here. Uh oh, it's gonna be a gag here, three man on the top side, Jerem. Gonna try and make himself survive. Colonia gonna try and jump in though, but without too much backup, Jerem, uh, taste of his own medicine here with a Vanguard's Edge. Colonia does not have the tools, however, to continue for the dive. You do not want to dive that Aurelia right now. But they do give up. Yeah, they do give up a lot of priority here topside. They even have the Retro Summon right there. And that is gonna be first serve of the game. Swinging the Golden West Point's favor, keeping it even. And that is going to be another swing here from this rep hero with Kresho finally having the room to roam. Yeah, that's good that the Kresho would have the chance to roam here. But it's just unfortunate that YJY won't be even able to go onto his lane really well. But because of the back timings for Scambolo, I think he's still going to be able to get this farm there. But again, West Point Esports are just trying to hold on to dear life here. But at least they were able to get the two tower advantage. But now, oh no, not make it going in. Goodbye. <laughs> by Parzival. That was pretty much him being denied that lantern, right? The whole time Parzival wow. could not get onto that lantern. So okay, that is gonna end up as a two turrets. So yeah, that's pretty much two turrets for what two kills here? If Azra can get four kills, and that's Drake. gonna be a full-on kick into the Sonic oh, Wave into wow. Resonating Strike. That's a three for two turret. Wow. And if all of that is going to Azra, I would actually say that's worth losing two turrets for. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because of this, look at the play that they did a while ago here. I mean, that was very aggressive from Sean Maker to be able to get the kill, but in the end, he was able to get get it anyway. But with the help of Azra, they made it work. Because of the kill, getting the kill on Revelate, and getting a 2v1 pretty easy, just because they don't have the slice and dice in their favor, and hitting that resonating strike, it was enough for them to get the win. That is a lot of wins, getting him a gold maker at it. That was really unfortunate. Like, nagihintay talaga si Kresho para dun sa lantern, pero hindi talaga hinaharagan pangit ka banding yung scambolo. They deny the lantern to get three kills. That is a big swing, huh? I was gonna say, okay, West Point Esports gets two turrets. That's, uh, that evens up the gold. That gives him a little bit more freedom topside, though. So Parzival can uh, actually threaten or at least threaten Jerem by a, with a gap from Revelate. But with those four kills from uh, for Azra, it's gonna be really, really tough to beat that for the next five minutes. Like for the next five minutes, Azra should just take over. Yeah, Azra needs to make use of this. I mean, we don't have a lot of objectives coming in in just a bit, but it's still enough. Just get some ganks, get some advantage uh, all around the map, get some tower pressure. Yes, they they don't have any towers down yet. So at least now, West Point Esports could make use of this tower pressure that they have in the top lane because top lane is basically dead. They can go for a lot of kills. Uh oh, it's gonna be Don having to use wild growth here. That is gonna be a hook. Ayman, can they get the damage? Oh, Azra gets baited in oh. with a resonating strike, but kicks back Kresho. Maybe can get killed, but Columbia comes in though. Pick, picks up the kill with Kresho, and now Ayman is on the run. Big shutdowns here. Unfortunately, Kresho got most of the bounty from Azra, but still, Columbia picking up that kill is very, very important. They. Once again, a very, very back and forth game from uh, our two teams here. And if we look at the instant replay here, smart instant replay here. Good bait there with uh, on the resonating strike. Okay, they missed the moonfall, but it's okay because with that lancer, they were able to bait on Azra. Getting that wild growth was crucial also in order for them to survive. And they got the shutdown goal. That is really what they need. Just at least, if that was given to YJY, that could have been better. But at least they were able to get the shotgun goals to get themselves something. Because they needed that something in order for them to accelerate uh, even the support, getting the Solari for sure. Mm -hmm. And though that's still pretty big, like they do 
lose out on this Drake here. Scambolo's probably gonna try and get this. Revelate might not want to risk going in for the steal and possibly giving up his life, but with Crash or right around corner, no, that's gonna be Resonate Strike for Smite. Uh, keeping that in Scambolo's favor. Jerem still pushing onto the top side, being a menace. And overall, <laughs> despite the game being even gold wise, because a lot of it is concentrated on Azra, the rest of Scambolo can ride on Azra's success. Like, if he gets a really good combo on someone, like a good insect combo on someone, Don can pick up the kill. Sean Maker can pick up the kill. Jerem maybe can pick up a kill if he's not split pushing. And. This, that, and meanwhile, West Point Esports doesn't have that same privilege of having a super fed member that can pass them a kill. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly it. If ever a team can just make use of Azra like, you know, at this time. But now, I can say Mirage is very strong at this point. Having the Blade of the Ruin King as your first item, this is the time that he can just take off in 1v1 anyone. And they need to be afraid of that potential that he can do. So, none the next objectives, they need to steer clear of where Mirage is. And mm -hmm. it would be unfortunate for Parzival, but he's the sacrifice that they need in order for them to move it more. Yeah, like Jerem here already full build. Not, not gonna lie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. On on this Irelia here. Look so at look at that. Parzival cannot duel him at all. And even if uh, the only damage there was from the turret shots, and he's already gonna be yeah. building all this back up, he's actually trying to lock out Parzival from getting any uh, too much of the CS, but. Going for a soft piece on this lane here. They're gonna try and break the stalemate here by going for a mid lane rift held. Maybe they can get a gap onto Jerem in the bot lane. Forces the flash actually from Jerem. But meanwhile, here in the mid lane, YJY getting fallen off here. That's good play coming in from Fresho. YJY going for the Moonlight Vision here. That is gonna be not too big here. Can he actually go for it? Jerem. Uh, still what? pushing on that bot side here, but Sean Maker comes in like a ninja, takes out the key members of West Point Esports, and turns the fight around four wow. for one. Wow, I really like Scambolo. This this team has been going on with this really well, especially with Azra during the play. Look at how they baited out the Dragon Station. They know that this is going to be a 4v3. The positioning around the map was perfect for Sean Maker to come in. After that, West Point Esports knew this is lost. We can't win here. Because Revelate went in, they tried to get the first kill, maybe get something out of it, but because of that, they lost 4 for one Even, even Parzival lost in the bot lane fight under the third. Two, two big takeaways here. One, Parzival isn't threatening enough of a frontline to yeah. maintain, to give YJY free hits. That's a big takeaway there, because the whole time Parzival was in the front line, he was, tanking, he was soaking up damage, but YJY was not able to get any free hits in. And not only yeah. because he was low on HP, like he was like a half HP there, but also because he can't step up. Parzival is not drawing enough aggro uh, from Scambolo for YJY to actually get those free hits. And meanwhile, Scambolo, they go in, uh, they have threat, because of Azra and Don, uh, but they also uh, are able to set up the kills here for Sean Maker. So, big, big opportunity there missed by West Point just because uh, a big portion of the front line is just not happening. Oh no, is Columbia gonna die here? For sure, perfect execution. You can see how Sean Maker just danced around Columbia there, and it's just a little bit unfortunate. Even though the goal is even, Scambolo is in a perfect position because a lot of their carries have all the gold. Meanwhile, West Point is kind of spread out. And that was... Oh man, Scambolo is just uh, wiping the floor against West Point Esports now. And it's just really hard to do anything at this point because most of the time whenever you have a composition like this, you're expecting to get the early game advantage. You have a Renekton, you have a Silas. This champions fall off super hard in the lane if ever they don't get anything. And they're not going to be sustaining against a team composition where there's a lot of damage. So it's going to be hard for them to make use of most of these champions. It's basically a done deal until YJY finds a point in where he could, he could pop off. Yeah. If they can steal away a Drake, that's a big objective bounty going in their favor here. But that's a very big if. 
And the thing is, the smites are not in their favor, right? Like, Azra has not only smite, huh? he's not only one level above Revelate, so the smite is stronger. He also has Resonating Strike, which is such a huge execution tool here. And Jerem, can he go for the Vanguard's Edge here onto YJ? Why? Haunting him a little bit there, looking for the Flawless Duet, not finding it. But in the bot lane, Sean Maker's already going on to Crash Here comes the Super Mega Death Rocket. Wow. Mars will get to get kicked into his body. And that is going to be Revelate going oh. down from the Sonic Wave. No resonating strike as he already went down, but here it comes Ayman to call him off Columbia. He'll go for the knockup onto Azra and pick up the triple kill once again. It's an 8 2 and 2. Lee Sin here, and West Point Esports is faltering. Yeah, imagine before that fight started, it was a 2v4. And they sustained, Sean Maker and Azra sustained their way during that cool fight. Mm -hmm just because they can just because they're that ahead and that is a big statement they tried their best there they don't have enough damage unless yjy is there and if he falls down this team is gonna fall and right now west point esports needs to find an answer if they don't it's just gonna snowball ahead imagine it's an irelia and a nakali that is super fat i'm not even counting the jinx at this point it's because even without yeah, the jinx playing. Yeah, even without the Jinx, they can end this game with just those three. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying that every time I see a Renekton picked up in a draft, I'm worried. Not for the Renekton yeah. slain opponent, but for the Renekton himself, because it's so easy to screw up uh, that Renekton. And even though you do your best as a top laner to yeah. really make sure that the Renekton is at its peak, is at its peak, one jungle gank, one bad trade, one outplay is enough to like really get this house of cards, this Renekton house of cards tumbling down. And that's why I think it's just not, not, it's not it, man. Renekton is not it. I don't think, um, I think pros uh, in other regions have also been catching up to the, to the notion that, okay, Renekton is just not, not the play. Renekton is almost yeah. never the play. Like we see him present in bans and picks, but it's only in very specific comps where they can't capitalize on it, and I don't think this is one of those comps for West Point. But um, they do still have the, the hope in the Aphelios as well, but it's a little bit rough, and we're going to have to see some really good shutdowns and objective bounties picked up before they can even think of coming back in this game. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah. He really goes well. I mean, the Renekton pickup was at least okay if that was the Camille he's fighting against, but against Andrelia, it's just super hard to fight against. I mean, he was expecting an Akali in lane. That's why they tried to flex the... They went in with the Akali pick because they're confident that Renekton is going to show up. And when they sh we saw the Renekton, Irelia has been picked up by Merej. And that is where it's done. Yeah. After Merej gets the advantage, after you get an advantage against a Renekton, basically the lane is done and Renekton would basically be like a Darius where you can't do anything. Yeah, Jerem, such a big factor as well. Like, not only the first outplay, like, he was confident enough. He knew the limits of the Irelia, right? So, that gave him the first blood, uh, that gave him the first kill on that top lane. And after that, the Renekton just found it harder and harder. Like, at first, I was like, okay, parang okay naman. Uh, na pe pressure ni Parzival dito si Jerem. But once Jerem got his uh, plated seal caps, once he got his Bamp Scepter after picking up the pickaxe, napakahirap hindi talaga kaya at that point to na mag keep up yung Renekton dun sa stat check champion na si Irelia. Yeah, and uh, again, it's just super great for, for their side. They were able to do everything that they can. But West Point Esports is just losing on a lot of objectives and a lot of positioning, mm -hmm. even the tower pressure. Even though na nakakuha sila ng maraming value with their tower taking down against until the second tier sa top side, mm -hmm. it was still not enough to put some pressure on the next objectives coming in because their champions aren't made for that. Especially their draft isn't made for that. I was mm -hmm. expecting that they are gonna be winning the early game, but because they didn't, it's going to be hard for them to turn things around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another one of those comps that just cannot keep up in the late game. Like, uh, at this point, Parzival's main use is to be a, a stun bot, right? Like, yun yeah. lang talaga yung magagawa ni Parzival dito. If he can get a crucial Ruthless Predator, Ruthless Predator na makapag-stun siya, siguro. The thing is, sino is a stun niya? Kasi if you stun one member, if you stun mm -hmm. the Jinx, like if you stun yeah. Dawn, 
Jerem and Sean Maker are still wreaking havoc in your backline, right? So yeah, it's very very tough. It's the the threats in we in Scambolo are just too well distributed. Like, uh, medyo yung portfolio ng Scambolo dito medyo diversified, no? Na hindi lang hindi lang sa isang carry sila nag invest And usually it's risky to invest in three carries, right? Like I never I never I would never recommend that. Na okay, top lane, mid lane, bot lane mo lahat sila may carry potential or yeah. hard carry potential. That's like that's putting too much pressure on your jungler, man. Na tatlong lanes yep. ipapa ahead mo. Pero nakakaya ni yeah. Azre. That's the yeah. thing. They're able to go with that risky investment and get their ROI very, very fast. Yeah, that is exactly what Azra has been doing. He's just giving advantages lane per lane. And I like that sobran taas ng success rate niya whenever he visits a lane. And that is just something that a jungler has. Na probably the charm that uh, Azra has in this game is because he's the one doing the work for his team, especially disrupting. He's doing everything. He's disrupting the other team's jungle. He's disrupting the lanes. He's giving everyone a chance to get gold, a chance to get fat. And that's exactly it. That's exactly what you want with a jungler. Kaya, kumbaga, at this point, I can really say, it's just that Azra is right now a better jungler compared to Revelate mm -hmm. because he was able to do everything. Everything. Hindi lang uh, yung pag, uh, pag yeah. even disrupting uh, Revelate at that point. It's it's just the ane. Uh, it's just unfortunate for uh, for West Point na ganito yung nangyari. Like a lot of the times that they disrupt si Revelate, and it's really one of those things that you have to. I mean, silver lining dito for West Point is if they go uh, if they go lose this, they're not out of it yet. They're still gonna get sent down to the losers bracket. They're gonna have to fight uh, Orgless. Um, so at this point, looking at how the draft went and how the game's going right now and how much momentum that Scambolo has like no like no offense i think it's really time for west point to reassess and uh, at least in this in the context of this term to reassess okay hindi gumana to laban sa Scambolo. how do we recover tomorrow right like yeah. even if they have a good matchup say against orgless kahit umabos sila ulit ng winners bracket uh, all the way to the grand finals pareho rin eh. if they don't fix yeah. what they're messing up against Scambolo, it's going to be a replay tomorrow if they make it to the grand finals. Yeah. Right now, I can say that the thing that has been wrong for West Point Esports has been the drafts. So far, the drafts na nakikita ko from the side of Scambalo has been a lot of ways they are good in solo queue. Sobrang lakas sa solo queue ng mga draft na pinipick off ng uh, na draft ng mga pinipick off for the side of Scambalo. And it's working against West Point Esports. And that is something that they need to think about when they're gonna draft tomorrow, if ever they're gonna be losing this one. Because mm -hmm. if ever they're not gonna be doing anything, any adjustments with their draft against them, it's hard. Losing a lane is hard. Yes, Azra is making sure that he accelerate yung power spike of most of his members. But if you lose in lane against a team who has a good jungler, then you're not going to especially with the individual skill that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just very unfortunate. Like a lot of these players from West Point are very experienced. They've been in the scene for quite a while, and it's just it's just very difficult to see this happen for West Point. I'm hoping that they they can like huddle. Um, uh, maybe if they if they win if they somehow win this game, if they somehow win this game, they have to like go for a quick three minute huddle. Bago haba naglalabi na. Okay, guys, uh, we already won once. Here's how we continue. Or if they lose this game and go zero two, they have to they have to go they have more time. They have more time to huddle and say, "Ano yung kailangan natin ayusin laban sa Scambolo? Yeah. Uh, how do we prepare for tomorrow?" But as I think, uh, nakapagload na tayo back into our game. Tapos na yung short technical pause natin. Okay, not yet, not yet. May may inaayos pa siguro sa side ng ano side ng mga players natin. But for now, oh there we go, there we go. So yeah. right now. You know yeah, it's just very tough here for West Point. We locked off with them losing both of their players because of the because of the gank in the bottle. Four of them went in, but because there's no YJY presence during that fight, it was a slow confident for Scambalo. It's just Sean Maker and Azra just doing a 2v4 with them because they know these guys don't have any damage anyway, so let's just fight them out. Yeah. And Jerem, even though uh, he's not like 
the superstar of this game again. Like he's like two one and zero compared to Azra's eight two and two and Sean Maker six one and four. He's still a big threat that you cannot ignore. Like if you leave him alone to yeah. split push, you're done. If you only send one member against him, he's gonna dive him and uh, probably win the solo kill, right? So you have to send yeah. two. And if you send two, that means Azra and Sean Maker can like do a two v three, which is even easier. They've already been two v fouring, no? So. Napakahirap talaga for West Point right now, and I I only see a few outs. Like they can go for like a pick off against Sean Maker or against Jerem na yung abscon chaka yung Moonfall siguro ni Revelit. They can try and go for that pick off, pero napakahirap pa rin because they've been playing uh, so slippery as well. Yeah, what's hard about this again with the Silas pick? There's not a lot of big ultimates that Kalumnya could get. And that's why they're having a hard time here. If he gets a Sean Maker's ultimate, he won't have the burst that Sean Maker has at that point. Yeah, sobrang hirap then for, for the side of Kalumi to be able to do anything. But right now, Scambalo, big advantages. If ever they want to go, they can go because they have two items and two members. Yeah, the Silas. Yun, yeah, that's a good point that you brought up, no? Like, the biggest ulties here are Azra's ulti, but here they can go for a 2 uh, three, 4 maybe, but here comes Dawn from the side, though. I'm taking a lot of damage, but that is the support. Azra still dealing a lot of damage. Dawn, re-hitting as well, gets a rocket, gets excited, gets the attack speed at the moving speed. He's going fast. Jerem right around looking for a target, looking Ooh. for prey as he stalks along the jungle. YJY, he's gonna be next onto it. Banger's Edge is gonna slow him down, and there's no escape as YJY gets fed to the wolves. And that's Scambolo taking three. Ayman is gonna be the only one going down for Scambolo, and I think they're okay with that. And not once again, Sean Maker. Like I said, if you only send one against either Jerem or Sean Maker, they're gonna go down. Yeah, it's probably a done deal here. Scambolo is able to wipe the floor against West Point Esports during that fight again, and nobody died. And right now, even Revelate is gonna fall down. Oh, they leave him alone. They're like, it's yeah. not even worth it anymore. <laughs> They just go straight for the objective and accelerate this game. Put West Point Esports out of their misery. Revelate's still looking for a miracle steal here, but Jerem's like, no, I'm not letting you. Forces the Lantern, the Dark Passage, out of Crescio War. And that is going to be the probably the Baron, even if he recovers his HP using the Honey Fruit here. It's just a done deal. Kait anong owa pa ni Crescio dyan, hindi niyo matutulungan dito ni si Revelate, i steal yung Baron na yan. That's just unfortunate looking at the scoreboard. It's like an 8k gold lead. Scambolo can continue. It's not even 8k. 8k is, is. It should be more than that if you consider the fact that Azra, so much of it is concentrated on Azra what? and Sean Maker. <laughs> That's the oh, most disrespectful imagine. teleport escape I've seen. Yeah, because he knows that he's going to be taken down anyway. So he went in for the teleport, not getting a vision. It was enough for him to save his life. That is. I think that is a really great teleport that I can say because Alumnia teleported like it in the back. Yeah. And I feel like at this point Jerem can afford to throw out those kinds of teleports because his team can pretty much 4v4 pretty easily, even 4v5. Because all the gold yeah. is actually on Azra and Sean Maker. So here they have the Baron, they're just gonna go straight for the inhibitor it here. Crash gonna try and look for a side um, a side kill here. Revelate oh. gonna try and go for it. No, Revelate gets stopped. No Moonfall coming in for him as well. Even the Moonlit Vigil is not gonna connect. That means they only have what Kalumnia what Kalumnia stole. And he's there's not a lot to steal here. Oh no. This is TP again. What? They don't What? What? Oh, they didn't no. have anything for that? They didn't have Ruthless Predator? Nothing? Oh, oh no. no. Scambolo's just styling on them at this point. They've been using it. What are those TPs, man? They've been using it to at least get out against most of the members from West Point Esports because they know they can take us down anyway. So might as well just use this to get out, not give them any kills, let them use most of their summoner spells and use the ultimate. If ever, later on, let's capitalize on that. Oh man, and they're gonna just gonna reset, spend all the gold that they just got, 10k gold ahead, and go for probably a game-winning push if West Point, they can put out like one last fight here. They can maybe get some good shutdowns onto YJY, but Malabu talaga, I can't sugarcoat this. It's just so hard for West Point to, to really pop off from here. And Crescio, can he get it? Okay, that's a, the hook on to Azra here. That's gonna be a big fight here, the box. That's gonna be a immediate sauce onto Revely to prevent him from being down. Sean Maker immediately takes out YJY, that's like the ninja. He is, and even though, even though, Kalumnia and Parzival try so hard, they just get dogged down. No deaths for Scambolo. 
and they're gonna start yeah. pushing in onto this mid lane. Might be it. This inhibitor as we're gonna go for Thresho as well. Nice Woo! play, but not enough to cancel out of the fascinating strike. And that should be the game here. 20 seconds on the clock. They should be able to pick up these in, uh, next turns very, very quickly to close out this game into a 2 0. Wow. Scamble. Really played that as well. 2 and oh. Again, everyone, that was a very decisive win for Scambolo against West Point Esports. Taking them down on a 2-0, puts them in the lower bracket. Congratulations for securing your spot.